from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. I don't know about you, but I can hardly believe that this past year has evaporated. 52 weeks just gone. And so Jack came up with a very, very good program today entitled Review of the Year. We're going to be talking about some of the major things that happened during this year. And number one, of course, is on everybody's mind, world facing worst financial crisis in history. Couldn't believe those last two words. And in 2011, 89 weather-related disasters have been declared. 89. And spring may spell out big trouble for the United States in the Middle East. And we're certainly going to be talking about that one today. But uh, just before, of course, we went on the program, Jack came to me and he said, I would like to just share a little bit of humor in the beginning of the program here. And I said, uh, what are you going to be talking about? Well, I'm going to be talking about somebody who's in trouble financially. So how about that one, Jack? We're, a lot of people are in trouble well, financially. Well, that was your first point you announced, Rexella. And, you know, even the college students now owe one trillion dollars. I don't know if they'll ever be able to pay it back. Well, this one kid couldn't do it, so he went to his dad and said, Dad, I can't make it financially. I'm coming to live with you. And Dad says, Sorry, son. Your mother and I are going to live with my parents. <laughs> and it's about that bad, believe me. Oh, God oh. help us, believe me. Yes, Jack, there's no way out for some people. They're going even to the grandparents. Friends, in 2011, there have been so many, many natural disasters. Of course, we all know about the tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis. Remember Joplin, Missouri? That was very dear to my heart because I was born in Missouri. And Japan and the tsunami. Now, these headlines sort of tell the story. In 2011, 89 disasters have been declared. Just take a look at that. And that was in Joplin, Missouri there. Severe weather losses, $35 billion. Oh, my, oh, my. And then more extreme weather coming, scientists say. I just want to ask Jack, uh, I've never seen anything like this in my life or reported anything like this. Do you think that it's going to continue, Jack? Will we continue to see some disasters in the world? Rexella, Diane Sawyer, ABC, said this is the worst thing we have ever seen in the history of the United States of America. 89 tragedies. And I think of Joplin, Missouri. And that's Luke 21, verse 26. Men's hearts will fail them for fear, looking after those things which shall come to pass on the earth, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And they were. And then in Japan, oh, how these people suffered as this tsunami came in, 100-foot waves, along with an earthquake, along with the radiation uh, leaking uh, from their atomic sites. And that, of course, is Luke 21, 25. Nations will be in distress with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. But what shocks me most is that our scientists say it's going to get worse. And I believe that's because the Lord is coming. And we're going to hear the sound come up hither, Revelation 4, 1, and it will sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye and we'll miss the horrendous hour of tribulation. And that's Revelation 3, 10. I'll keep you from, out of, ek, the Greek word, the hour of testing which comes upon the whole earth. But things are going to get bad. Just study Revelation chapter 6 to 18, the seven-year period of tribulation after the rapture, just before Christ returns to the earth with his loved ones to rule and reign here forever and forever. Many earthquakes are mentioned in the book of Revelation. In chapter 6, verse 12, he said, I beheld when he'd opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Carl Sagan, who is not one who promoted the Bible, said there's an hour coming when there could be a tremendous earthquake. 
uh, be caused by a meteor hitting the earth and it would cause darkness over all the world for a period of four solid months. In Revelation 16, verse 3, we find that the oceans become poison. This could be from radiation, like what Chernobyl did, uh, the Ukraine atom explosion, and poisoned the waters of that area, and what's just happened in Japan. Well, something happens during the tribulation hour that's the most horrendous thing in history because every living creature in the sea dies. Where is that again? Revelation chapter 16, verse 3. Drastic times are coming. So this is just a preview then, yes. Jack. And worst times are coming, as the scientist said there in that headline. Well, turning now to economics worldwide. It's not just here in the United States. Worldwide economic fears hit markets from New York to Tokyo and world facing worst financial crisis in history. Bank of England governor says. Now, certainly he has uh, the right to say that. He studies it probably more than anybody. I wonder, Jack, does the Bible teach that it is going to become the worst in history financially? Rexella, everything we're hearing from the commentators of the world, the secular people, constantly saying the worst ever, just like Diane Sawyer said about the weather and now about finances. It certainly is. And I've mentioned this a couple times during the year, but I'm repeating it. We are in trouble financially, not only around the world, but right here in America. The FDIC went broke 10 months ago, and there is no way they can assure and insure the money that's in your banks. Now, how bad does it get? In James chapter 5, verses 1 to 4, it says, Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Why are they crying? Because so great riches has come to naught. They are really bothered because everything is kaput, as we say in the land of Belgium and Germany. And that's verse 4 of James 5. But the weeping and wailing is carried on in Revelation chapter 18. This is the tribulation hour. And verse 10 says, For in one hour is her judgment come. What kind of judgment? Verse 17, For in one hour all her riches are come to naught, to nothing. Verse 19, In one hour is she made desolate. And while men depend on metals, oh, silver and gold, let's get them for trading purposes. Ezekiel 7, 19 says, they shall cast their silver into the streets and their gold shall be confiscated. When? Revelation 16, 1. In the day of the wrath of the Lord toward the end of the tribulation hour. And they're going to go to a new system because of it. The mark. This will replace all of the money. They'll start over again. And that is what happens when we get chrysalis. The one world religion united with the one world government of the Word of God, mentioned in Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. But the one world religion, ha, ah, is Revelation 13, verses 15 to 18 power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He causes all global rich and poor to receive a mark in their right hand or forehead that no man, it's global, could buy or sell save he that the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, the Antichrist. It's the number of a man in his number, 603 score and six. And Rexella, about three, four weeks from now, I'm going to deal with the European Union and the seven organizations that brought it into existence. And one of them is the Bilderbergs. And they met at Chancellor, Virginia in November of 2008. And they outlined the plan to microchip every human being with that mark in 2017. And the Club of Rome said we're going to divide the entire world, every nation included, into a 10-division world empire. Jack, I'm just amazed as I see the Bible unfolding before our very eyes. Things are happening that God said would happen just prior, woo, to something good, His return. Now, 
I never thought in my lifetime I'd see something on television that we saw happen in 2011. The Russians dared to make their voices heard in 2011. The beginning of the end of Putin? Ooh, well, he's standing firm, but we'll see what happens. And here's another one. Putin blames U.S. for protests. I said Secretary of State Hillary Clinton had a lot to do with that. Russia's Putin says, wants to build Eurasian Union. That's very important. And Russia, China to hold joint military exercises. U.S. to build up military in Australia. Whoa. We'll talk about why there. And I love this one. The future still belongs to America. For now, friends, for now. Now, Jack has often spoken about Russia. You well know about Gog and Magog that he has spoken about. That refers to Russia leading to a final big war. Now, I wonder, Jack, is Putin going to stay in, do you think, or is he going to be defeated? Let me first say, Rexella, that I started preaching on the subject, the coming war with Russia, according to the Bible, in 1950, and I haven't had to change one single word. And it's come to pass exactly like I said it would. And those names in Ezekiel 38, verses 1 and 2, called Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, Rosh, are all cities in Russia right now. Let me quickly say this. Gog is the one who heads it all up, and Putin was firm. I will trade places with Medvedev. This is just a temporary situation. I'll be back. But now there are protests. Could it be because of what he's trying to create? The Shanghai Co-op Organization. We, along with China, will get together and we'll create Eurasia. But the two of us will control all this part of the world. And maybe the Russian people are unhappy with that because they want to be identified with the European Union rather than with the other side. And this new world order that Ahmadinejad is talking about concerning Iran and China and Russia and all the rest, I don't know. But time will tell. He already has enticed Kazakhstan and Belarus to be a part of this. And those are those Muslim nations that used to be in the USSR. And now he wants to pull them back again so they can become the most powerful empire in history. And folks, I believe it could happen. And this man is clever. He was one of the leaders of the KGB, the worst spy organization in the world. And I believe he'll get in again. And he will probably become the Gog of Magog. But let me say this. The Arab Federation goes along with Russia in the war of the latter years and the latter days, Ezekiel 38, verse 8, 16. And you find Egypt in there, and that's the brotherhood just elected who'll push them Daniel 1140. Then also in this war called Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, we find in Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7, that Persia goes along with Raj, Russia. And the Persian Empire originally consisted of Iran and Iraq. And both of them changed their names from Persia to that around 1935. But in the Hebrew, there's Kush and Put, and translated here, it's Ethiopia, Libya, but it's much more than that. It's Yemen. It is the parts of Africa, Sudan. It's Algeria, Morocco, Libya, all of them. It's going to be an Arab federation united with Russia, but that fails. And that's Ezekiel 39, verses 1, 2, 12, and 13. It takes seven months to bury the dead because of the defeat of Russia and the Arab hordes. The second invasion occurs when China makes the move, Revelation 16, 12, for the greatest war in history, Revelation 9, 14 to 18. Rexella, our president just said we do not fear China, but he does. Right. Because he is now signing a contract to place our troops in Australia to be ready the move of China. It's all here, folks. The prophecies are fulfilled, and Jesus could come at any moment, because this all happens after the rapture. Oh, 